Okay, um, hello everyone. Hello. <laughs> There's a lot of people still coming. Um, but yeah, we're gonna start in 30 seconds, actually. Well, uh, welcome to the OpenSUSE conference. This is our very first time here. It's actually our very first time at any conference at all. Um, EOS Design System is a very new product in the open source industry. Um, so yeah, this is why we are introducing it, uh, introducing it to, the, to the world here, actually. Hello. Hi. Hello. Yes. Hi. Um, so yes, welcome to this presentation. Um, as uh, Cynthia said, uh, now we're going to introduce ourselves, actually. It's our first time we present this to the world. Um, so let me introduce myself. I'm Jesus. Um, I'm a UX developer and Scrum Master for the EOS Design System team. Um, I, I live in Barcelona. I was going to make a joke about the weather. Barcelona being very sunny, not here, but it's super sunny here, so no jokes. Very nice weather today. And yeah, um, we, I work um, designing and, uh, and developing um, components for the, uh, the design system that are ensure that um, um, products in, at SUSE and other open source products have uh, coherent uh, user experiences. My name is Cynthia. Um, so I work for SUSE. I worked for SUSE for um, six years, so more or less. And I actually I started with this project of uh, creating a design system for, for SUSE initially. Uh, I'm, I'm actually the product owner of the US design system. I'm also a front-end developer, UX designer. I do a lot of things here and there. And here, well, today actually we're going to start here. Today we want to take you into a little, a little journey uh, so you understand how we actually understood, we found out the design systems are the solution to providing good experiences to our customers. So software is seeding the world. That was a phrase that was published in the Wall Street Journal in 2011. And it was a phrase that actually was uh, making a lot of noise out there because by that time, a lot of the, our, our industry had to start to adapt and understand that software was becoming a core part of our lives. And today, actually, we cannot do a lot of things without software. And actually, this, this phrase is, is reality. Without software, we cannot really do our, our daily, daily um, tasks and not even work uh, at all. And we can see that one of the, the things that happened when this phrase was actually published in the, in the Wall Street uh, Journal. Our blockbuster was actually kind of collapsing by then, and, and Netflix was eating uh, the blockbuster. So the, in the industry was really uh, being disruptive, and that actually happened. But something else is happening right now, and it's the design is in software development. Um, at the same time, there's some other, other revolutions that are happening out there as well, right? So. Uh, one can say that virtual reality is also eating software development, or one can say that augmented reality is also eating software development. There's a lot of things that are disrupting the way that we do software today. But one of them, and today we're going to focus on design. And why is this? It's, it is because uh, a lot of companies in the industry actually realize, and we understood today, that in order to make better software, we actually have to provide better, better experiences. And design and UX experience is actually what helps us to deliver a good quality of experience of, of products to our consumers. So we have a lot of companies in the consumer world that actually understood this, that they, understood this, that they uh, started investing a lot of money into creating good and better experiences. Uh, some of them, I just mentioned a couple, are Facebook, Uber, Airbnb, and so on and so forth. Um, a few examples here, for example, the, the way that uh, Facebook is one of the biggest um, content managers or content databases in the world, and they actually don't create anything. They said the consumers are creating, creating it for, for them. And that's because software and the experiences that they provide to us allow them to gather all that information. And the same happens, same happens to everyone else. And 
This is another reality as well. So this is a generation, this is a two years old. And this is a video that the father made in which actually she's, uh, he's showing that the kid is trying to zoom an image. This video actually became very viral. It was, it was uh, seen everywhere. And the, the thing is, uh, we actually have to pick up the pace a little bit uh, with, with this revolution, with how we enhance experiences and how we make our products better. Because today, so there's, there was a lot of uh, different generations, and every generation is known for, known for different things. But for example, the millennials are known for being very good at multitasking, and we uh, understand, uh, understand processes maybe in a different way than it was for the baby boomers, as the previous generation. But now this generation, which is the uh, generation Z is called, they were actually born with all the uh, software that we have today. So there's, a, there's another reality here, and it's a, when you create software, when you design software, design uh, products, there's one essential thing that we have to look into, and it's uh, we have to fulfill user ex uh, expectations. So the more that we use software, it's the more that we can use the certain patterns uh, for software, and the more that we, that we expect to see those experiences from one product, let's say from uh, Google Maps. Uh, Google Maps has a certain way of showing us direction, and if you use another product for uh, taking directions to come to this office, uh, conference, for example, you kind of expect the uh, same uh, patterns and experiences. That's because it, it actually is wiring your brain. It's, 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 uh, these uh, experiences, these uh, interfaces are uh, getting to you. And like I said before, there's a new generation coming as well that we actually, we, we should never forget the new gener generations, they disrupt our markets, they disrupt the way we do things. And we should pay close attention to this generation that's coming and actually, it's not so far away from us because uh, if we consider people that were born in 1996, uh, they're what, uh, 21 years old, more or less, and they're already among us, and they already are more experienced than we are, and that is true. We have to understand that the young people may know things sometimes better than we do. So we have to invest in our experience. We have to improve the way we deliver experiences to our customers. But then, okay, uh, it's, uh, maybe it's not so hard to understand that we have to implement uh, good, uh, and deliver good experiences, deliver good UI in our applications, but there is, there's another reality. And this is a, another reality that came straight into our faces. Um, it's not playing. Yeah. So we got this face lab. <laughs> and uh, we, we are in a very specific industry. Open source and enterprise software, it works in a very different way to the companies that I was showing before, Facebook, Uber, Google, Airbnb, anything else. Anything that is consumer oriented. They, they, they have some priori uh, priorities and prerogatives that we don't have. We don't have the time normally to deliver things and we have to just ship it as soon as we can so we don't lose customers. We have different customer bases as well. We have people that are more experienced and sometimes uh, well, we, we, may, we tend to think that we don't have to deliver such good experiences or such good interfaces because they're experts and they know what they're doing. But that's, that's not really the reality today. So that was, that's how it was a long time ago. One would say, would say that enterprise and open source software was far, far ahead in terms of user experience uh, in comparison to consumer, consumer-oriented consumer companies. Now today that gap is closing. And we have a lot of companies out there that are investing a lot of money, that they have the money to hire thousands of, of designers and. Uh, UX experts and all that, but um, there is there is also a better way to do this. 
And like I was saying, a lot of companies have the money and they have the budget to, to hire people, but actually scaling design uh, through hiring is not really the only way to do it. You can also improve your processes. And this is why design systems are so hot right now, like it says here. Design systems, I'm, I'm sure that you all heard at some point uh, that a lot of companies are investing in design systems. Uh, so yeah, we, we are one of them. And what is a design system? So design system is a centralized source of information. But a lot of people tend to think that because it has a word design in it, it means that it is for designers. But that's not really true. A design system helps developers and designers. And to be really fair, it helps more developers than designers to provide and deliver cohesive experiences. So that's the whole point of a design system. It has all the tools that you need to provide an experience that is consistent throughout all of your product portfolio. Let's show you a little uh, scenario of a, um, a company with, a diff with three products in this case, uh, how they work with us with, without a design system and with a design system. So basically this will be more or less a setup of a company that has different portfolio, different co uh, products, and you will normally have a designer per, per product working with the de developers directly. But then, as you see here, so I just put a very basic example of a close button. That is actually what happens in the end. When you have groups of people uh, working isolated uh, in, in this way, the outcome tends to be this. So the, comp the, the, the interface and the experience for your consumers, because we always, we always have to think about the customer and our cons the consumer of the application. It's, it's different. So we have the, the red, the black, and the blue button. This is just a silly example, of course. But uh, bottom line is uh, what we get is growing inconsistency. It's more expensive to test because in this case, what we had to test, we had to test the first one for this product, the second for the other products. We, we are testing each time the same component for, a, for every product. So it actually becomes expensive. It's, it's non collaborative, uh, collaborative uh, because we have every designer is working isolated in different ways. So, and actually, if you actually try to fix that, we, we, we try it, it's a lot more complicated and it's really frustrating for designers to have to try to align when you have different use cases and different products and you have different agendas and different products. So, that's what, we, was, that's what you get. And well, something else uh, actually I was almost forgetting to say is that uh, it's non-reusable. Uh, so that, that's one of the main uh, wastes of money, I would say. So the, the company is creating something for one product, like for example, in product, uh, the first one, why didn't we just use this in the, in the other products? Well, maybe because the agendas were not the same, maybe because the use cases were not the same, who knows. But with the design system, Everything goes to the source first. And this is how we save money somehow. Because in the end, we are saving development time, we are saving testing time. But what we really need to focus is the consumer has the same experience in all of the products. And like I said before, so this is also, it streamlines the collaboration between designers and developers. Because everything goes to the source, there's not so much to discuss really. It has been tested, it has been discussed previously before it goes into the product. So it is, it's, a, it's a lot of um, money and time saved. The structure of the design system, just so you have a rough idea, is composed of assets, icons, typography, uh, components, templates, um, modules, uh, guidelines, how, how we talk to our, um, our consumers, how, how, how is our brand interpreted by the consumer. And like I was saying before, this is not for one or the other. It's not just for designers, not just for developers, for both. And normally what we get out of a design system is we get the components that the developers need. And normally it's just the front end part. Back end is never included. And we get all of the design pieces because designers also need to continue, continue growing their, their, their uh, products and the design system as well. 
But everything is in one place, and everything is tested in just one place. And okay, so now, actually, I'm going to give it to my mm -hmm. colleague. So, as um, Cynthia well explained, um, the design system is, is uh, a great way of actually breaking away with these silos where you know, um, we can't really ensure that there, there is coherence between um, different teams in terms of uh, UX and UI. But it's also true that uh, developing a design system... How does this work? No. Oops. There you go. Uh, developing a design system takes time and money. Um, it's, um, it, there's a, a whole process of uh, research and development in behind a design system. Um, initially, the, there's a step where components are defined, where we try to identify areas of our interfaces, where we need to ensure that interaction with our users is meaningful. and. Uh, then, of course, um, once we, we, we identify this, these issues we want to solve with a design system, there's a, a, a whole side of um, research where feedback is gathered, where we speak to um, our, use, our users, where we look at uh, analytical data, and um, you know, we, we define um, different elements that will comp uh, compose our design system. And that, of course, translates into, into money. It's costly. And um, it's clear to us that uh, many projects, many open source projects, organizations, small and medium-sized um, businesses probably don't have the, the resources at the human and financial level to actually build their own design system. And this is why it's not working. Oh, okay, sorry. And then there's, of course, the whole issue with scalability. Let's say you're building your own design system. You want to have a set of um, rules that actually make sense uh, for your interfaces and break away with these silos we mentioned before. But then, of course, your interfaces evolve. Um, new features are added. Even um, you may pivot the whole purpose of your project. And that means revising um, Again, your design system, going through them and making sure that it's it, you know that you don't define components uh, redundantly, that everything is uh, reusable, and um, that's something again that it's not probably easy to assume by uh, to actually um, um, to I'm sorry, uh, it's not something that you know uh, you need uh, resources for it to actually be able to to handle and to maintain this uh, design system. And probably many um, organizations don't have these resources. So why did why do we why do we build EOS? What's the the, the reasoning behind it? We want uh, to build a design system that's customizable, which means that you know you just can can go on our repository, you can clone it, fork it, and um, easily apply your brand to it, your brand, your project. Um, Colors, whatever. It's just very. The idea is that it's easy to customize by anybody. We want it to be scalable. We want the, we want to be able to actually add uh, features to it easily, and um, we, of course, want it to be open source, which is uh, to us what makes makes us different from other design systems. To our idea is to be the first uh, open source customizable design system. Um, you know, we we leverage, uh, we use um, open source technologies on our daily basis. I think we all do, and uh, for us at EOS, I think it's we think it's important that we sort of give back to the community, and uh, you know, encourage everybody to to actually collaborate and, um, and you know, sort of help developing a sort of open design system. You know, we strongly believe in the idea that you know UX is for everybody, not just big enterprises. As Cynthia mentioned before, there are big enterprises who have massive amounts of resources and tons of designers and developers working on a design system. But that's that's you know that's not the case for the majority of us. So you know we want good UX for open source. You know any project uh, you 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 may be working on, you can just uh, leverage uh, the, the, our design system, uh, EOS design system. 
And we also, we also want to encourage you to go beyond the framework. What do we mean by this? Um, usually, if you build your, you know, your web, uh, web interface, you use technologies like um, well, libraries such as uh, frameworks such as uh, Bootstrap, for example, which already provides you with a set of um, uh, components and different UI elements. But what it doesn't give you is really, you know, um, an understanding of, of how do you use these components? How do you interact with your user? Um, what does work, what doesn't? And how do you speak, communicate uh, with your user? Um, and that's, that's what uh, makes, you know, that's what actually makes a design system different. What actually is the added value of a design system? Um, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Apologies. And of course, uh, you know, as I said before, we want it to be open to everybody. We, we think that you know, there's um, a lot to give and a lot, to, to, a lot of feedback to take from the community. And this is why we already have contributors on, on our project and uh, you know, we take feedback uh, from them um, and uh, we sort of collaborate closely with them. And yeah, it's great. So what have we done so far? How far did we get with this? Um, we are at an early stage of, of uh, customization. What uh, do I mean by this? Um, so our idea was to, so we, EOS is the design system for SUSE. So we, we uh, the main purpose of it initially was to actually ensure that, you know, that there's uh, coherence and consistency between uh, EOS products. So as Cynthia, the, the example she gave before, you know, if you have different silos, different teams that uh, develop a button, for example, it, it translates into different styles of uh, buttons for uh, products in, that actually are from the same company. So that's something that we, we managed to do. And then we wanted to prove that this is, uh, that EOS is customizable, and this is how we um, actually also um, deployed the, the OpenSUSE design system. So basically, it's a fork of ours, of uh, EOS, uh, but with the branding um, of OpenSUSE. And um, the proof of concept is there. We proved that it's, uh, it can be done. You can just uh, customize uh, the design system for your, for your needs. Um, now the idea is to take this uh, beyond uh, proof of concept. What we want to do is we want to be able to customize it completely, which means um, um, adding a content management system, for example, where you know, once you, you, do, you, you use, start using EOS as your design system, you can easily add new components to it. And um, you know, it's, it's all, it also makes it accessible to, to designers and you know, everybody who may actually work with it. And what does it look like? Um, so, as I said before, this, um, I'm going to do a quick demo now. I'm going to show you a couple of um, uh, com components, but I encourage you to also visit the, the, this URL. So, the, this is the, uh, the EOS design system is, let's say, the main design system. And then, of course, we also have the OpenSUSE flavor of it, yes. Okay, so... Let me just leave this here. So I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna demo EOS um, mainly because um, this is let's say so we work on on different features, and um, I'm gonna give you a few examples of uh, uh, how you know how it works, what what makes it different to a framework like uh, Bootstrap, for example. And I think a good, a good example of this would be, for example, alerts. So basically. You know, many frameworks, many UI frameworks actually come with these components. So you have alerts defined, how they look, uh, the states, etc. But uh, what they don't do is they don't tell you how to use them, where to use them, and you sort of, you know, be aware of the different contexts where you can use them, and then uh, ensure that they are meaningful to the user. So an example would be, so there are different alert types. So there's a global alert, and a global alert is um, is something that will appear at the top, the sort of at the top of the, your application of your web application, um, 
and then basically what you see is there's a you know always a short description of how to use them uh, what kinds of actions they can include um, whether they can be dismissible or not you know, things that actually do matter um, depending on the context uh, of each uh, case scenario and then of course on you know uh, what you see is that uh, we've as i said before we are actually using bootstrap as a base so it's not like this is a this isn't a framework for for ui only so the idea is that um using bootstrap you can also um sort of use this on top to actually um just simply copy the the example and just add it uh, straight to your application so that this is an example so you see this different hmm? so if you of course, as something I just forgot, um, these are code examples, but then at the same time, there's also specifications for it. I mean, the idea is that this is used not only by, um, by designers, but also, uh, by, um, not only by developers, sorry, but also by designers. So in the end, you have a full set of uh, specifications, uh, you know, the information you need to actually be able to implement your, these elements in your interface. I'm just going to give you another example, if I can. Yeah. But it's not all about you know, design. It's also about things like how we communicate with our users. Um, so for example, we have writing guides. So what, uh, what are these writing guides? So you know, there's, there's, when you have an interface that actually speaks to the user, you know, let's say you have uh, an, an error in a, in a pop-up or whatever, you know, any, any kind of message that you send to the user, it's important that you define, you know, a voice, you know, are you, are you knowledgeable, are you too aggressive when you speak to your user? Um, so we provide, what the, these guys provide is actually a, um, a sort of set of uh, definitions of how, for example, this is for Suze, so how you should sound when you speak to your user, right? So for example, in our case, what we defined, this is something we researched on and we spoke to different teams too, and uh, this is the, the outcome of it. So we are experts, not too bossy, and we, we're friendly, but we're not informal. That's the idea. And then, you know, once you define your voice, it's also, it's also about the tone. And then we have conventions and rules. We even, you know, you can drill down to things like acronyms, for example, how you use acronyms. And this is something that is always, you know, we work closely with other um, size of a product, for example, branding, uh, marketing, for example. And then the idea is that, you know, this is something that you don't need to define for your project because it's already here. And, you know, they go, it goes on and on. I mean, uh, there's other great examples and uh, colors would be another one. Um, this is, uh, a, you know, here we define a color palette and uh, we also you know, give a guideline on how to use these colors. You know, what uh, thing, what works in terms of contrast, for example. Um, and this is great because it means that you already have, you know, in this case you have variables for uh, preprocessor, CSS preprocessor, but you get an idea of what works and what doesn't. So you don't get, you know, you don't mix, you know, you don't have the text where um, dark text uh, over a dark uh, background, for example. Um, so yes. And then there's, um, should we show perhaps icons? We have only three minutes. So yes, that's, that would be it. I mean, please, you know, I encourage you to have a look. Um, you know, the, just uh, access the, the links on the, on the slides. And um, that's it. Yeah, well, um, yeah, that, this is all for the presentation that we have. Um, uh, I'm also sure you've managed to see actually by the, uh, all the time we have the links here uh, down there at the footer. So if you want to get in touch with us, if you want to try out what we have, there's a, we, you have the links there. EOS, EOSdesignsystem.com, that's, um, that's the URL. We have Twitter, we have well, a lot of other things. Just get in touch with us, uh, get in touch with uh, Jesus and myself if you have any questions. Uh, but we really, we really encourage you to collaborate with us because we, we're not just building the SUSE our design system as uh, many thought actually. This is open source and we are um, helping as well the open SUSE design system. 
And we kind of need a little bit of help there. So the more help that we can get, the better that this product is going to become. Uh, so yeah, I, th I think that's it. Please, that. please come over to our table. We have some really nice uh, stickers too. So please have stickers. come and grab one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so thank you very much for coming. It's, uh, yeah, it wasn't so bad. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, we don't have time for uh, questions, just so you know, because there's another talk we're starting right now. So if you have any questions, just come we're to just our down there. To our table. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.